commit themselves to a maximum of five minutes. Thank you. First up, Susan. Good morning to everybody here today. My name is Susan Wright. My background is in education and sports management. And I have a master's in education. I'm the HOD Office for Health and Wellbeing Faculties for the many schools in Auckland in Australia. I've worked in accounts for New Zealand and rice chicken company and the director of setting up life support programs. It's my logo, a big seed for confidence and coordination and having fun in sport. Set the Network Academy at College Life and Sport Complex in Auckland. I'm experienced, I have experienced a variety of services during my netball and tennis career from aged four at Wimmel Road in Auckland, to top services in New Zealand and overseas. During, during my teaching and sporting career, I know four services, like our present situation here in this town. I always felt that with Auckland. I arrived here when I was 10. My parents rented by the golf course, and then we bought a place because Derek Boyd was our wonderful friend and he sold the land next to his property in Ocean Beach Road, which is our family home. And our sister now is the owner of that home and is going to build the house. So just a little bit that I'm not random. I love this town. Derek and I have settled here. We are now retired here. And we are really proud of the people that live in this town. Quality people that here in every walk of life. The result of the poor and dangerous surface, which can affect limbs, ACL, Achilles, and I could go on and on. We have a young lass in the town with an ACL. She was a top netballer, and now she is unable to play anymore due to poor surfacing, not in this town, but in a Coromandel town. The result of this has decreased participation numbers and our aim is to provide top tennis and netball options for all ages. Tairua Sports Community, which is situated by the St. John's Ambulance, which is very dear to my heart, West Paddy Helicopter, we don't want to use often. We want to work alongside the council towards the upgrade of the hardcore surface, which we believe is in your budget plans. The surface and facilities need to be upgraded to a state all weather surface to accommodate all ages, groups, and hardcore activities. Today, the club has raised $15,000 to refurbish the existing pavilion, which is a diet. It's had a painted exterior, replaced the roof and deck, presently painting interior, upgrading the kitchen, and the first school holiday program will start there on the 7th of July to house any young Tamariki in the town. Other requirements to the upgrade are fence between the pavilion basketball area and courts because the balls fly everywhere into the windows and people could not play basketball while someone was playing tennis and the balls roll underneath the fence. They just, it's a chase time for everybody that plays there and that could be health and safety because if you get whacked on the head with a tennis ball, you get severe concussion and I know that because I've been there. We need a volleyball for individual practice. Flood lighting on one netball court with low impact, impact LED lights. You have seen the benefit of quality lighting in the town, and that was raised by. I just want to thank you all extremely, and John, let me go first because I have to rush off to take a class. The class I'm doing is called 
40 plus yoplates and it's to help people over injuries and also the money that is given to that class is going to the fundraising. All the school holiday program, which will be in these holidays, will be for the benefit of all the children that come visiting our lovely town. The courts are not about just who live here. It is providing opportunities for all who visit. A quality facility that will be managed properly, that will be looked over and cared for with love. I promise you that. My husband is that man. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I leave you with this. Health is wealth. There are too many people with medical not just physical, but thought <coughs> is the answer. Camaraderie is the answer. Sharing and helping each other is the answer. And this is Tairoa community at its best, working together, every one of us. Thank you very much. Please Thank consider you, this project. Yes, because a multi purpose service for all is all we have. Thank you. Got a question, Mr. Campbell? Oh, Susan? Question. That's right. Sorry, pardon me. Susan, Manaya Road Tennis Court, is this that? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's the same place. Yes, yeah. it's with the sports club. That's Tana, mm -hmm. Leicester um, Pavilion. Corey Park. Okay. Corey Park. Okay. okay. Yeah, I see it's in the long term plan for 2023. So $57,000. Too far away. Too far away? Far too far away. Thank you, Susan. Jane. Jane? Where's Jane? Who's coming? Can that just. Oh, I Ross's Ashby's plan for that in the proposal that he prepared for the community board was presented in May. Um, that area was soundly rejected by the neighbours. You can see in the top right corner there was a boat that's number one Manaya, and the next house on the edge of the diagram is number two Manaya. Um, my proposal would be. Seeing that area of car park used opened up the possibility that why couldn't the children's play area be shifted into that area and then that would leave enough room on the other side for a skating area and I had a bit of fun making that. So that is there, I hope. There we are. The blue being the where the children's area would be site recited. And there's some skate path doodling. There are so many. It makes it a lot better than any of the uh, either of the other options. 
And there's a lot in favour, as we all know, of this central site on the Kepi Reserve. Nearby toilets, absolutely essential. Shops, regular vehicle and foot traffic going by for awareness of behaviour, etc. This is a popular gathering place for families. Plenty of room along the waterfront for relaxing. There's shade, which is a health consideration these days. So families with children of all age will be able to enjoy recreational activity there. We have children that have grown out of this children's play park area. Um, they are in the love it. Something to do with their family often go down to picnics there, and they live in Kairua. Pepe Reserve is a long-favoured site by many, as Ross has noted in his uh, uh, report. The new skate location will only really be near the toilets. It's now more than 50 metres away from that first house, which is shielded by trees and growth because right alongside the boundary at the front there are two big uh, sewage pumps. Planting could be easily added there. Always regular traffic activity in this park around the loop and parking and cars banging and people doing things. It's, a, it's an active place, actually. I've been there this morning early, and it's already got people taking dogs and banging the car doors and driving around the loop and so on. So even if you do need a resource consent, I think that this rearrangement has so many things in its favour that it we're difficult to have a good argument against, given the kinds of activities that already are taking place on the Pepe Reserve. <laughs> Car park area, which looks unsealed there, and what I've said is actually sealed now. But the thing is that people actually only park in one row. It's a great big space. They only park in one row along the boundary, the edge. So it's a big extra turn in the So there's not a lot of parking lost, but extra parking could be added. As on Ross's drawing, he had around the grass perimeter some multi area, what do you call it, the able to pack, but it still looks grassy. Yeah. So with the um, building about to start on the toilets, there's going to be a lot of big truck activity into that park, and there's going to be remedial work required at the end. So I think a spruce up would be beneficial, and it could open, it's going to have to have remedial work. Uh, open the way for alternative use of the area proposed. Skateboarding seems to fit into many categories. It's an Olympic sport, I guess. And it's hardly a formal re recreation in the context of the small town. An active recreation, maybe, but this can be contained by the, the facility that is provided. Obviously, we can't have a bowl anywhere near there because we can get people out of it. Makes it difficult anywhere in flat Tyrua to tell you the truth. Um, so, but if you put in a big, massive half pipe and a drop in bowl, then high end skill skating is required. And if you've been to a skate park, it's high end skating. It rules out a lot of other kids that want to take that park. Those parks are sometimes quite a dangerous, unsafe place for your small children or even your middle sized children because of uh, the ones that want to do all this stuff and push the others off. Uh, realistically, in Tyra, there's no space. There's very limited space for, a, for skating. So we put in a path similar to the, the things that are provided in Ross's drawing there that's underneath my doodles uh, or something with some paths and things. I've got <laughs> plenty of movement and use with scooters and skaters enjoying the challenges of the area. I do recognise there will be quite a lot more cost involved. Uh, if the community can see that something is going to happen at last, I'm confident that there could be considerable financial support come from the community for this project. 
And so I would like to put this as a win-win-win-win-win-win situation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, John. I think everyone agrees that it is. Have you approached the person up there who's been uh, against us? Has he have you put his complaint in front of him? Against it here. This there, the the uh, no, neighbor that's no, I haven't because uh, that would be part of the formal process. Yeah. I've been sort of on a fence this morning and looked across there. It's not their main outlook. It's um, it's now so, more than fifty meters removed from his corner boundary, which is full of trees, it's, um, and he's got a sewage pump right outside his fence as well, so it's not really his right angle for looking, but um, no, I, I don't want to argue what he might do, but I think that he might have to come to the yeah, he might, might justify this and the resource consent, which will have to be obtained because of the yes. type of activity that this skateboarding has claimed to be. Okay, thank you. We're going to move on, mate. We've got a full program. Right, John. Thank you, John. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Warwick, community board members, CCDC staff, and all of us. I'm John Fanshaw. I live at Hornsey Road in Victoria Parks, Lane. 2018. I made a written submission to the long-term plan concerning a state path for Tara. This was acknowledged by TCDC. What I would like to ask the Nimsi board is to explain what happens to submissions to the council. And also I asked Ross Ashley if he ever read this submission and any other submissions about state path paths made at that time. Back in 2011, I attended a two-day hearing of the Environment Court held in Hikawai Hall. The resident Tara police officer at the time, Constable Arama Chase, was also there. Some time later, he made a point of speaking to me about the skate park proposal. He then told me that during a meal break at the hearing, the Commissioner had asked him if he was happy with the proposed site on Puri Park Domain. Arama replied that he was not happy because this site could not be properly supervised. All of that would likely be left to nearby residents, which was not desirable. When asked further of his preferred site, he told the Commissioner that he preferred the Pepe Reserve Playground close to the road where there could be better observation by the police and the public at large using the park for passers by. As we are all aware, the Pepe site also has the other advantages of toilets and other facilities nearby, available shade and is a more congenial place to gather. Some rate pays AGM in a community hall a year or two ago. Someone inquired about what progress had been made with the Tower of Escape facility. You might remember this, Chris, springing you to your feet to give an answer and then pointing to the reserve, Happy Reserve, saying, If I had my way, it would be there, just across the bridge. I hope you've not changed your mind, Chris, and that we can make something happen on this side. Speech is just a... There seems to be some awesome. selective <laughs> <laughs> select memory of the history of trying to find where to site a skate park in Taro. So I would like to point out that opposition to developing a skate park on Quarry Park Domain in 2011 was actually supported by a large number of people. In January 2011, amazing, there's a photo of it. Four people who were concerned how their continued enjoyment of this neighborhood would be affected. The Preserved Quarry Park Domain Incorporated Society was formed. 
By the time of the actual court hearing, the membership had grown to over 250 people, including 29 families whose properties surround the park. So, not just a handful of people, as is often heard today. We have five grandchildren, aged 6 to 14, who enjoy recreational activities in Tarua and would very much like to see a skate path in the preserve, in the preserve area. I would be happy to contribute to any fundraising and know of others who would too. I read that Whittianga residents raised 150000 towards their new park, which would have ensured its survival <coughs> in the recent uh, round of spending cuts. This proposed idea will cost more, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. I hope is that we can now all work together and achieve the construction of a worthwhile skate path in the revised Pepe Reserve location as suggested in the previous presentation. Yeah, Thank, thank you. you, John. I'm sure we're all uh, pushing the same idea. It's, it's unfortunate how things have transpired over the years. When I became aware of that environment court decision, things started to Go a bit pear shaped, I can tell you, in the community. So, however, thank you, John. Thank you. Um, Murray. Oh, yes, please, it'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Murray Snook, all the way from Power Good morning. <coughs> and thank you that I can come and speak. I speak as chairman of the Power Community Church, situated at 20 Cedar Way, Power and in the 90s, our church congregation and the committee decided to build a memorial hall, which is um, situated on the property, um, and which the council has an easement access going around it, uh, which had the easement for that to facilitate the transit from the hub across to the shops. I'm not raising something that's for now, but it's looking to the future. And that is that the memorial wall, which we thought would last for 50 years, 60 years, is already half full. And we believe that it is in some ways a council responsibility for the future. So I'm raising something for the future. When the memorial wall is full, which we're probably looking at 15 years' time, that the council has in its plans where they can cite a memorial wall um, and administer the wall. Um, <coughs> the reason it's there on our property is that people were asking for a memorial wall and there was no council land in proximity. And, uh, and we made the decision. And so we've, I'm raising the issue today so that somewhere in the council agenda um, that it is looked at and we can see with the council land opposite where the hub is built that there would be adequate room to, to, to site a memorial wall. Uh, it just needs to be put into the plans and noted. So when it, it happens, we can facilitate it. Sure, Murray. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. We've got Anna here. Is Anna here? No? No. Gordon. Sir Gordon. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> The residents of Hong Coast have sort of had enough of this backwards and forward between DC, TCDC and WRC. It's just gone beyond a joke. 
and with no action that we had a, uh, a meeting three years ago and uh, we sort of day for what we were going to do and nothing has happened in those three years. I've been at this meeting every month trying to push things through. Uh, I understand that WRC is the main culprit of it and I'd just like to uh, quote something that they put in their last uh, bulletin to us. Flood protection reduces the likelihood of floods impacting on our communities. It safeguards lives and properties, enables use of land and protects services such as water supply and power. They don't live up to their hype. So what we were think, asking is that uh, TCDC could bypass WRC and clean that stream out. Uh, it would take one, two men with a truck and a clean motor, two days to clean that stream out. Three weeks, or three, we still had three weeks ago, the road was again flooded. And, uh, but the uh, stormwater drain that we had altered handled that, that was good. But the last, uh, the small road at about the side was all covered in mud and so that was nothing happened there. I don't believe anybody's gone there and done any assessment later. The houses at the back the stream is still overgrown, so why can't we get in there and clean it out? So, uh, WRC, they don't give us anything. And the residents are getting quite angry about this being flooded, mm -hmm. and I understand that. Tommy Guy has insurance problems now, his insurance company getting insurance for his house because it's <coughs> flooded twice. And uh, DC, DC was in the wisdom bit and put the house flat on the ground, and uh, so that was his house flooded, just a brand new house. So where do we go from here? Can we get another meeting with TCDC and get it done? For the last six months, we had no water going through that stream. It was dry as a bone. And it was a perfect situation time to clean that stream out. We didn't need any sediment control or anything on it. No. It wasn't done. Let's, take, let's get this job done. It's only this a small job, but a fix some of the houses there in the so, You know I've been here complaining every time, and nothing has happened. Still you've gone on a bit. Oh, yep. Yes. <coughs> you can put 52,000 into a, a fitness track round, round in Kennedy Park, but you can't do any money. Has this project gone off the radar or is not because it's not on your work program. Has it gone to shelf or, or cost cutting measures? I'll ask Terry to answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we hear you 100 percent Yeah, we're gonna discuss today yes. with Bruce and the trying yeah. to do something for you that, that is beyond belief that's where yeah. it's not. It is beyond belief. Yeah. Yeah. So when are we going to get a meeting with Bruce and that to with the residents on that and say what we can go on to for because we've got more plans. We put plans through to the TCDC for the uh, operation of how to fix it. But uh, we've got other plans than that too. So we would like to uh, come and have a meeting with the uh, TCDC, the residents, and that, that are kind of fix that. So the end, by the end of the day, you'll have some sort of uh, understanding of what they're going to do. All right, there's no going keep going. Oh, yeah. three. Oh. I like seeing you guys, but I don't like to keep complaining. I'm going to rename the river and put a digger in there tomorrow. So, uh. <laughs> oh, no, that's what I would do too. A couple of grand or three, three grand and that, and you digger and that, and it'd be done in two days. Thank you, Steve. It's hard to have you on a seat. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Gordon. We are going to discuss this in the later on, aren't we? Yeah, that's not in the workshop. It's not in the workshop. I think we need to discuss it. It's not in the workshop, but we do have Dennis Tech. That's not in the workshop. But yeah, if it's as easy as getting the digger, let's get the 
not be big ones. It's not as easy as getting the team. No, no, it's, it's not. not as easy. We can have a discussion later. later. Thank you, thank you, Gordon, and rest assured you have all our sympathy. <laughs> it's like a, I know I have you. It's like a festering sore. No, no, no. Go away. <laughs> Okay, thank you. That's the end of the public forum. And this is anybody else. Oh, is there anything there any here that's coming on that's not on the wish you had to say? Sorry, Joyce. I just very briefly, um, I'm Joyce Bertzel and I represent Gaines of Pago Bay at this, at this time. Um, we wrote to uh, the community board on 17th of March in relation to um, plans to trim or remove a tree in Piper Drive. Um, and I understand that COVID's intervened in that time. And I, but I did ask that that letter be um, given to the community board and uh, we have had no response. And as far as I know, uh, it hasn't come up at the community board meeting. So I'd like to know how we get um, that letter put before you and how we get some response on it. Uh, the letter was addressed to Ivy and also to the um, the area um, manager. This is this is the one of the uh, one by Amy. By That's right. Yeah, yeah. So it was sitting community facility, so we could follow that up for you, Joyce. Thank you. But I just might like just the response rather than sort of it goes into a call. The other items for public forum. They're not being. That's a public forum. Item 1.4, I oh, think not on the agenda. Move and second at the case public forum. Yep. Second. Very. Are there any items not on the agenda? Well, I thought while I'm closed, but we discussed today, we're not discussing that. No, well, it's not in the workshop. Um, but I like it raised. Okay. Yeah, can we yeah. Yeah. To the agenda, I think it needs to be put on the agenda yeah. because I think given the measure we were sent out, and I think you know, we need to address it. Well, I think we've got to discuss it. Yeah. Bruce has got some planning yeah. yes. what he wants to do, so I think we should do it. Yeah. Okay, so it's not on the agenda. We actually need to resolve that. At the end of the agenda, we need a good reason why it can't be delayed. We're talking about the, the, sorry, the chair meeting or the workshop? Uh, yeah, good point. We're trying to discuss it at the workshop. Yes, yes. 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 Need to confirm 1.6 minutes for confirmation. It's on. A minute of the previous meeting. I'm happy to move that way. Thank you. This is changed again. How long? Bloody computer first amendment person again. Sorry? Oh, was held on the computer. I'm pleased we're meeting in person again. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I second it for that, please. We had a move. Yep. Chris, thank you. <laughs> Any matters rising? Nice minutes. Two point one. So, we've had a move and a second. Yep, it was two. Two point one. Committee grants. Give me time to bring it up. Yeah. I had a look at that simply tank and I can't tell what, what the influence system is there. So I'll have to give oh. it to the council records. Okay. Two point one. Well, that's where we are. 
Oh, a dozen minutes of the meeting? Yes. Okay, very good. Yeah. No. Never been born. Yeah. The only comment was the um, septic tank out there, I think it was like Christmas. Look at uh, 2.1, there's the grant to Tyra Kieran Friendship Cup, the Treba Draws, and the Pranui Half Marathon. Mm -hmm. Sorry? I've got a different set of grants. Oh, we're going to. Have you? A different agenda? A different agenda? We've done the minutes. We've done the minutes. We've got a whole different set to what's up to there. Well, we're on, these are the grants up here. Yep. 2.1, I've got um, the bus. Are you at the workshop? Um, you're in the workshop agenda. No, you're in the wrong agenda. Yeah, you're in the workshop. Go back to the, the ordinary meeting. The last meeting. When I downloaded the meeting, that's what I got. Go back to your class. So, yeah, so these grants here are just the ones that they haven't spent from last year. They just want to pull it over to the next honey. Roll it over. Because the Pahanui Half Marathon's been postponed. Yep, because of the COVID, wasn't yep. it? Yeah, yep. so, so they're still going to do it. They're still yep. doing that, yeah. Yep. The policy requires us to do a report, and the board have, uh, it's up to the board to approve whether they retain the grant to spend next financial year or whether they have to pay it back. Does that affect them applying for a new grant as well? No. Okay. Yeah, so I think it's a fair thing. <laughs> Just for the avoidance of doubt, is it $12.37 for the Parliamentary Half Marathon or is there a no? Okay. Yeah. Well, just yeah, it's it's it. $12.37 because okay. they only sent invoices mm -hmm. in and they were 12, they were $37 short of what they'd been given. Okay. So the policy says they still... Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. I'm just yeah. making sure I'm yeah. 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 Got the decimal point as well. I just said no, I take care. Yeah, there is that. Remove and check it out. I'm moving. Yeah, I'm having a second. <coughs> so, yes. yeah, good Are you right over there, Anne? Yep. Did you have some notes that you wanted to raise? No. All in favour? Yeah, all in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <coughs> Again. <coughs> Two. Try to work program. Yeah, can we just go by line by line and through this, please, through the chair? Certainly. Um, Roy Billy points go red. Um, so... And somebody update us on what's what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Yep. So through the chair. Um, so the Royal Billy Point project um, <clears throat> has required additional budget due to a, a mm -hmm. couple of reasons. One was the uh, the main reason was the archaeological authority that was required due to the um, the proximity of the uh, um, location of the midden. Uh, and apologies if I'm covering old ground and the board's already um, up to speed on all this stuff. Um, but when the project was first planned, that was unknown. Um, so that's caused a number of delays to the work actually through that project uh, and additional costs that um, have had to be incurred with the contractor. Um, we had some issues around timing because of that, which um, we couldn't get it all done by, um, by late weekend uh, last year, um, which then pushed us out. Uh, and then obviously with the, um, the COVID situation, you know, because the plan was to get it done around Easter uh, or after Easter, um, but with COVID we haven't been able to do that. So um, we incurred a number of additional costs around um, uh, preliminary and general costs, um, so anyway, we've got to re-establish on site um, and we're going to have to do that. So there's going to be an additional budget required, so that will come back um, back to the board and through council um, to go with that, um, which would put us um, over budget. It's a quarter of a million dollars. Yes. It is, yes. So it's 15% over budget with all that. If you include all those costs, that will put us 15% over budget. That says additional funding required to complete remaining works. What are the remaining works? Uh, I don't have all the details with me at the moment. Sorry, Terry. So um, yeah, we can we can find that out though. 
it's my understanding it was completed and but there was and a budget overrun because of Heritage New Zealand. But I thought the work had been completed. So, but no, there's more work no, so it's not it's not fully completed and I, I wasn't involved in the detail with um with the project team and Andrew Bowden and Lynn. Um I don't know if you guys were, but prior to Labor Weekend last year, they got the majority of the stuff done, but there was still some additional work and they couldn't get that done uh prior to Labor Weekend plus mm-hmm. budgetary. So they had to get what they could get done to make it usable for last summer and then come back and do that stuff. So we're going to come back and do it after Easter. And um, with the COVID, they couldn't do that. And so now they've got to come back. So there is some additional work. Um, yeah, I think it's the last the to do so. it's the last connection to the... My, yeah, my understanding yes. was just finishing off the ramp. Yeah. Well, 250 k for that seems a bit bloody extreme. I haven't got all the break, the detail breakdown. Uh, it's not going to be just... <coughs> I'd say it will be for a lot of additional costs that the contractors had, had to incur due to the, the change around the um, Heritage Authority and all yeah. that work associated with that. So that's what will be making up that, that quarter of a million dollars that won't be just extending, just doing a little bit of work that's left on the ramp. They found the cash cow. Can you, um, can you help asking. us with the Heritage New Zealand cost? Uh, I, haven't got, I haven't got all the detail on me um, at the moment, but we can definitely distribute that to the board. Is it likely to be what, 50,000, 100,000? No, 20,000. Um, so it won't be, it won't, the main cost won't be in um, like the money for Heritage New Zealand, it'll be all the associated uh, work and delays that were required as part of that work. So it's not like you pay they you know, to pull out a whole lot of money straight to Heritage New Zealand, and that's where it's come from. It's, it's more well, it's the, the sun, but I'm building off at the moment as well. I don't know whether that's anything to do with what the done changes they've done to the ramp or anything, yeah. or just the weather situation. Yeah. I'd, have to, I'd have to get the team to have a look at that. Um, it's it's also the bridge to the towards comes, but the bridge is sort of attached to the same uh, top Yeah. How's councils through the chair again dealing with Heritage New Zealand in the future? Is there a fund for this? So there's no fund. So what we've done is the project team, uh, it's a good question. The project team have, um, because they've, uh, Heritage New Zealand have ramped up the way they're doing things. And, and basically what we did is we got them and brought their team in and we had them sit with um, with the project delivery team, with Andrew Bode and all his project managers to get a much better handle on the situation heading forwards because they're obviously a lot more resourced up so they're going to get around a lot more of the projects. So what we've done now is that the team have a much better understanding of the process. They also know how to budget in some costs. It's hard to budget for that stuff, but they're obviously budgeting it into the projects a lot better than what was done previously. So we've really tried to get on the front foot with that, build a better relationship with Heritage New Zealand now. They've resourced up and make sure that we're kind of getting them in early rather than, you know, them coming in later and then it causes all these delays to the contract. So I just need to understand, is a push-out cost or a push-out time? What uh, is both. Oh. Yeah, both. How does it push out cost, <coughs> apart from the fact that you're preparing work to do it? So cost what's is, their cost? So their the cost is that when you're constructing, you need to have someone on site. To pitch often, not always, but you often have to have someone on site who can observe the work to see if anything's being disturbed off historical ability. Right, it's not previously a quarter of a million dollars, so right. not, not for that, no, no, no. no. So we need to understand that. There'll be a number of things that build up that money. It won't be just that, that side of it, yeah. So there's going to be a few... A few different components that way. We, so, we know they shifted, they had, when they stopped, they had to shift their gear off and then reinstate. So if you end up in that situation, right. that, yeah. that does that you end up incurring a lot of cost for disestablishment and establishment back on site. If they, well, they're going to bring back, bring back a digger on a couple of trucks. It still costs them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but not 250k. And. Yeah, well, as, as we just said, but it's not, you can't say 250k is just heritage costs or just establishment costs or just it's it's a lot of cost that's all built up which I can get for you. I think it's actually important because we all went through the annual plan and we cut back some budget for other things and now all of a sudden you've got two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We knew this was coming. Yeah. I know we knew it was coming, yeah. but that should have been but it doesn't make it any better. No. Some detail around it would be good. You need the detail and that's yeah. what before the approvals are made, the detail you need the detail before you can do the approvals. So yeah. that's what this is. This is not the approval of that money. I'm not obviously we're not trying to aim for that now. Uh-huh. We're just so giving you a heads up and saying it's going to be coming back. So when the, the budget was set, like when the when the tender was I know the tender system went all pretty shit. Yeah. Because of America's cut and whatever. Um in future the heritage of New Zealand cost would be built in. We, we, yeah, so through the chair, we do, our best, we do our best efforts to 
to anticipate and then put in some assumed costs for, for those kind of things. So that's what I was um, answering Jerry's question before. We're working closely with Heritage New Zealand and so the project managers are now a lot more over the top of that stuff so they can make some assumptions and, and put some allowance into the budgets when they're doing those. It is very hard to know because some sites they'll come on site and be like, no, it's nothing, it's fine, just carry on. Other sites, it's a lot more work, you need someone on site and all the rest of it. So it is hard to budget for. Um, Surely most, a lot of that should be done at planning time. Yes. Yeah. Hey, yeah, so when, yep. if we're deciding to do a project, first thing you do is get them and say, right, hey, what's yep. the deal? Which, which is that, well, that's what they do now. But the challenge is, you know, until you, for example, if you're going to rip off a boat ramp, you don't often know what's under the boat ramp until you've done it. So there is a, a few whole points where you do need to get them involved during the process. So it's unfortunately never as straightforward as getting it all sorted at the beginning and then knowing exactly where we're going. So they are a bit of a loose cannon in terms oh. of they sometimes, like you say, pick you and sometimes they don't. Yeah. And a lot of it's around their resourcing. If they've got a lot of big job on and they can't come down and spend enough yeah. time on our, on our jobs, quite a bit of might escape through, you know what I mean? It's So yes. it, it is a bit of a challenge. Um, but there's some, you know, I think we've talked about this before, is um, some really serious legislation that they can stop any work yes. that they, oh. that they yeah. want to or need to for, for good reason. Yeah. But, Mm. So they've got some very extensive powers under the legislation. I think it's also law, and I think also too, that as a community board and a council, we also need a little bit more understanding of what New Zealand heritage is about. And I don't believe that that $250,000 is entirely New Zealand heritage. I'm sorry. Oh, no. No, because no, no, I know no. from previous experience, working with New Zealand heritage is the same cost. You might talk about 40,000, maybe 30,000, mm. dependent on if they found something. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the delays. What are they find that stuff? Some seashells. Yes, they probably oh, did there. I think you need to go and read so the, the New Zealand the, Heritage Act. Through the chair, I think, um, I think Anne's raised quite a good point is that we, we need to do a better mm. job with elected members as well as staff around <laughs> what the requirements are. And, and what the implications can be and how it does impact on um, planning that previously might have been done around projects and stuff. So I think it's probably... So they've raised their profile in the last couple of years. It used to be yes. so... Exactly, yeah. They changed the law. I think we need to make sure that we're the money. Yeah, they changed the law and they moved more into archaeological yeah. um, things and because archaeological, like the New Zealand, plays quite a considerable um, part of Heritage New Zealand now. They also took on, under the new Act, more of a court law as well. We best work with them and work against them. Oh, no, I mean, yeah, no, no. It's just the way the job went. Mm. What's that? Isn't there a guy that you can consult with, though? Yes, there's a guy we often bring in. Yeah. yeah. Who can help you bring his name? Warren Gumley, that's it. Yeah. And he's name. excellent. He's so, actually yeah. regarded as tops. Yeah. And he's already done considerable work with <coughs> archaeological, um, you know, things in this valley. If you look up on a map, you'll see T's <coughs> and the reports. You can anyone can read those reports, and it's in the planning stage, I think. I'm just concerned that we went for a hard budget. We're not in a good state financially. And all of a sudden, we've got this thing that we knew was coming, but $250,000 is a lot of money. And we're supposed to be trying to conserve well and pull ourselves out of it. Well, so through the chair. So when that comes back to council, if there's opportunities to, um, you know, we all, my, my team have to present op options around proceeding. And if an option is to not proceed uh, and not incur costs, that will be one of the options that the board can make that decision if they decide that's the way to go. So we always aim to provide you a number of options from, yep. from not doing anything yep. to doing the full noise. Mm -hmm. yeah, and if there's options in between, we'll provide those as well. We so need the detail. Yeah, need the yep. detail. And, um, and and you do end up in situations sometimes with these projects where there's, there's work you have to do and you can't just yep. turn it off. But, you know, it's a it's a yep. nice to the projects. You're going to be scratching when you get it finished by Christmas this time again. Uh, yeah, potentially it could be. Yeah, it could be. And then you have 250000 if you go over budget. All right, fine. Oh, no, don't take that. Okay, um, present point. Yeah, I'd like to raise through the chair if I can. Uh, this job's done, which is great. 
But I, I just raised the issue around, if I can, Bruce, mainly directed to you about yeah. the uh, contract and how it was laid out. Right. Um, a, another contract provided a quote for this and quite detailed. Um, yeah. and, and there was a feeling that the one who got it was a lot less under that standard. So they, they were worried about which standard <coughs> this um, job required. Right. Just to give you some, and I'm happy to chat about that. Yeah, but, okay. Um, I'll catch up with you. So just really making sure that uh, apples for apples when they're quoting and um, yes. the same sort of out of out of uh, cost businesses or you know, extra bits to it. Yeah. So, but it's done, I hear, understand. So the yeah. $6,000 left over, is that just left over or was that, what's the, what's uh, the actual that's, left? That's the actual spend at the end of May. So you'll probably find yeah. out that how much it's been gone. Yeah. Yeah. gone. Yeah. I went and had a look at it yesterday. Yeah, from the harbour. Really, you can see sand. Yeah. <laughs> That's from the sand eggs. Yeah. No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's from the storms. Yeah. I'd say. Anything else in there? News? Library? No, library. I'm Actually, trying to find the one that is, oh yeah, the Pawanui Beach Access 9. Can you give us an update on this, Bruce? Um, so I think this one came back through the uh, board last week, didn't it? That's the one that was discussed around the surf club uh, and Access 9. Yeah, and they were um, talking about some... Um, yeah, so I can't recall all the details, but it was around a different way of doing things, um, and it's, it was on last month's uh, yeah. last meeting's agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think the board went through it in some detail at that yeah. point. Um, but, yeah. I think the key around this, though, is they brought in um, some lime powder at, I think it was $400 a cube, and mixed it with something else to do the path in, and there was an option to... <laughs> possibly. It's a different yeah. material to use in the pathway. Mm. So I just wondered why that change in... Approach, maybe? Was that a request from... It, it, it is a big improvement from what was before. Right. Uh, I think it's a good, good comment about... Is it finished? finished? It's finished. But I think it's finished, isn't it? I don't think so, no. Oh, no, 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 it's, no. It's, it's really good. Yeah. Right. So is the composition stuff they're using now, is that similar to what they put on um, uh, Mercury Bay Walk? I like the Hogan part. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is something along, along those lines. Yeah, I'm not, I don't think it's exactly the same, but it's a different surface. So I it's a lime powder to mixed with something else. I think so, yeah. It's just like kind of there to like lock it in, but it's, a, it's still a natural surface rather than, you know, having a. The storms uh, just, we've just got about a major factor on Pownui Beach. <coughs> a lot yeah. of the yeah. access ways are bad. Oh, and, well, it's ongoing, isn't it? Oh. I mean, erosion is just. Oh, me oh. And my point is, is this going to be the standard? I think we'll, I think we'll, it'll be nice to be the standard if we can see, if it performs well, I think it's around that. So let's yeah. see how it performs and then if it performs well, looks natural, then, um, then, then, um, then it probably will perform. If they're not the leading down onto the pitch to go into the 45 an yes. angle. Yeah. But uh, after, so I suggested nine years ago, I think it was. So. <laughs> I mean, it's taken nine years to get it. Is that what you're saying? Taken nine years with the list. <laughs> the um, playground equipment. It's uh, fairly costly. This amazes me, this playground equipment stuff over there. I just find it. Yeah, it's playgrounds in the winter for children. Sorry? It's just making a comment that for the number of playgrounds, being upgraded and the number of children in the census that, um, you know, there's a lot of children. They've got to have one each. Yeah, one each. One each. One each, <laughs> yeah. Right. Through the G, I'd say that, you know, during this time of year, it's probably not many kids around, but during the holidays and the summertime, there'd be kids yeah. everywhere. So, yeah. you know, it's the same situation that we have with water and everything else. We need yeah. to provide but, services for you know, the, the people who come down here and their batches and stuff, so, yeah. And I think the key there is it's normally appreciation, so if you're yeah. not looking for new money for this, this should be money that's paid for by the ratepayers over um, time, over the life. so oh, it yeah. should be available to be ready to go. Yep, I so right. they say should be because it wasn't. Well, I seem to remember quite a bit of that got stolen. Yeah, that's right. It got moved around <laughs> in this 2016. Yeah, that's stolen. But we have stopped that, so that 
that will slowly grow again. Okay. So that would have come out of depreciation? Yeah, they are depreciation. Uh, Anything that's a uh, renewal, renewal of every new replacements of assets. But given growth. And that happens after the change that caused that to be. Yeah, so what, so what you're talking about is that some depreciation reserves were used for renewal of assets, but also if there was a project where they had, um, they were putting some additional assets in, yep. they were being used for that as well. So that change has been made now that anything additional yes. does not get funded out of that. But only, no. It's only yep. for funding renewal of existing assets. Yep. So yeah, so I it's just a, doing the yes, so it's, a, it's a tweak to that. So um, yeah, any play, playground replacement will come out of depreciation reserves. And when the one of the waterways suddenly and it seems to be five minutes old, but they rebuilt it. Time I think flies. one of the waterways yeah. will be absolutely packed before long. Yeah. And it's looking really good as well. That's good. Really good. Yeah. I think what they do through the chair too is, Chris, is they should come and ping test it. And they normally ping test the metal to make sure if it's, you know, they test the ring to see if it's greater inside. So they can stretch the time of the period if it's yeah. still good. Oh. So it's just about making that decision around advice from engineering, I suppose. Great. Yeah. Okay. Oh, state craft. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's a workshop. That's a workshop. Yeah. 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 What are we doing now? Kennedy Park Fitness Equipment. <coughs> yeah, how's that project going? That's finished, is it? No, that's no. why it had, had to get pushed out as well. Pushed so that's why we're, the equipment is being purchased this financial year, mm -hmm. but installation is not going to occur until um, until the next until the next financial year that's right. coming up. Right. So, right. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so they're planning for money in the future too out of the budget. Continue that part? Uh, right. No, unlikely it would be. What that one would have been would have been as part of that annual plan process okay. that went through. Any money, any projects that we knew could have get done because of the lockdown. It had to get carried across that, that yeah. change was made at that time. So right. budgets were cut, budgets were carried, there was all that stuff went on through that process. Happy Reserve, where's Roscoe? He's oh, bloody taking off. He's in and out, in and out. He's running scared. Yeah, he's running scared. Yeah, he's running scared. He's running in the sun. He's getting some vitamin D. Terry wants him. Again, I want to. Do the next one, I'll find yeah. out. Yeah, no, he's gone to the next one. So, the skate bowl of power doing? Uh, yep, so that thing's moved, that's moving ahead, yep, yeah. um, mm -hmm. for the next coming through here. Yeah. What's the, what's the total budget for that? What's, What's the total budget? budget for that? Oh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, sorry. Um, something else. Yeah. That'll come up in your work program. I did have that figure. Next one, 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 next Mm. It's um, $116,000. Yes, that's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. I've had a bit of um, issue around street lights. Is there anything from over here? Um, street, have you got street lights? Yeah, I haven't right. heard any visuals. Um, There's a whole lot, it seems to be a whole lot of new lights on the top of there, so much just shining down. They're not in use since, so I haven't heard anyone complain. Does, but we've got a whole lot of new street lights right up there. It's you like, mean they've activated them? They've activated them. They were there, they didn't do it. No, like no, no reason, reason to turn them on. Yeah. Yeah. It's only two houses <laughs> up there. Is there a protocol where they turn them off at some stage in the night? Yeah, yeah so they set automatically. Um, they've got an automatic um, thing where they set the based on the sunrise and yeah, sunset. Right. Yeah. So they have a program built in the, um, and power code to control all that stuff. But they go, they run all night. Um, in the generally, day. Yeah, generally. Yeah, generally. Yeah. 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 No, just looking for a moment, I notice mm -hmm. occasionally it's very hard to see if they're on down the Nile Road. Okay. So generally you can see what pulls of yeah. light down the road, but yeah. then on another night yeah, there's nothing. Okay. So yeah, I'll keep an eye. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I think through the chair, what Terry was referencing, Fong Matar, they had quite a few issues with the number of streets dropping yes, out. Yeah. And so the board of dropping, to, you know, whole streets are dropping out. streets dropping out, the lights are so off. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. the yeah. relay yeah. power code. So I think yeah. the board kind of jumped all over that and, mm -hmm. 
Um, I think it's been resolved now. Um, that might be all time down there. Could be, yeah. And they do have issues around that. Yeah, it's it's around around that around. Around. <coughs> yeah, yeah because you're stuck on 24-7, you know, the day and stuff. What do you do, Rookie? Just cut the neutral, right? No. Well, sometimes you turn them on and check the time they come up when they do the maintenance. But Barry, is there any more streetlights than we used to be I don't know. I think so. Years the years got those different lights will come down now and start yeah. going out. Yeah, they've got the new LEDs. Yeah. They're very, very pleasing. Yeah, they're much better. Mm. Are we, did we go for a coffee? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
hopefully, but not interfering and taking sides. Mm, I think there's, a, uh, there's a need to understand a bit. We put 150k into it, so we need to really oh, understand. Could we put 200 and something on it? But yeah. it's the nearest 300,000, Terry. So we need to understand it. We also si signed an MOU that needs looking at. And we don't um, want to walk away. We just want to yeah. Yeah. It seems oh. like a prime example of the planning not being done properly. Right from the exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to challenge that because they've got a regional council consent to do it. So they've got the consent to do it, and then yeah. now it's been challenged that way down at the docks. Put their hand up and said, Whoa, the bus. So mm. there's a little bit of okay. feeling that maybe we were trying to do the right thing and that's turned a bit pear shaped. I think you also need to look to the EWE issue as well because evidently they stopped it as well. So you've got to ask why there's three different groups that have said hot bus. After getting it, you can see. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure why either, but I really think it. it, it I, I, we were involved in stage one and we were happy to do it and, and you know, for stage one and happy to help fund it as yeah, well. Yeah, I agree. But stage one yeah. never had any fish hooks in it. No, it did. Yeah, but it could have had fish hooks, but because people were working together a lot better, I think it was when they came out into the world and started doing a, you know, trying to just so do elsewhere. Okay. Norma, Norma White's actually joined our meeting. She's on Teams. Yeah. She can actually comment, make some comments on this. Well, that's oh, okay. I'm not sure how this is going to work. So. What? Are you coming up here? Hit the button um, and let us speak. I think good, morning. good morning, board. How are you all? Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, I'll come back to you with the cost and. Yeah, Sorry. from from an economic economic development perspective, I'll come back to you and just to um. Uh, I don't have the figure to hand, but a council's role is to facilitate uh, agencies and stakeholders getting together um, to come to a consensus. In regards to the stage three of the trail, DOC and EWI are in discussions and we are in further discussions with um, the Hikawai um, community um, and the residents who um, uh, I have interest in or have uh, some uh, interest in the in the trail development. So it's an ongoing process. It is taking some time, but we are getting the bright people together to, to discuss a way forward. Um, so, you know, I can provide probably a better update once I've um, spoken to the person on my team who's leading the project in terms of just bringing all the right agencies together to, uh, you know, to try and get some consensus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, mm -hmm. there you go. We're we'll going to hand back, Mr. Bosco. Yeah. Did you have a? Um, oh, just PP, PP toilet three and update. Ah, uh, yes. So uh, the latest is because we were we were working with Perma Creek, and there's been a little bit of delay with COVID, mainly around some of the supplies for um, doors and things like that. It was going to be installed, I think, it was early this month, but it's going to be delayed till. Will be before Christmas or before summer, but it's August, September, looking like the delay is on that one. Ross, so they we talked about originally setting up some sort of portaloo thing on the side. What's the plan? Has they changed? Ah, uh, no, we we're hopeful if it's before the busy period that we will just have some um, temporary portaloos in the actual uh, park. Yeah, yeah, because there was quite a bit of expense yeah. to go to that um, roadside one. Right. Um, so there was going to be a little bit more budget. For okay. the a bit of signage pointing them over to the. Mm. Toilet, yeah, footing yeah. ground. Yeah, it's only through a walkway and across the road. Yeah, yeah. That's the point. Or a detour. Yeah. Um, Has the design changed? No, no, it's all it's all there. They're, they're building it, but it's just been there's been some delays. It's going to be built up site for them. Yeah, that's that's how they got my job. Mm -hmm. Put it in. So, um, we prepare the ground for another contractor, and then they pop the the toilet in the landscape afterwards. So. So does it happen quite quick once it happens? Yes, really quickly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the budget, where are we sitting with that? So you guys put in 412, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Tiffith comes to the party. This uh, government has put in half again. Mm -hmm. um, we are, as far as the estimate costs go, where it was in budget. So we, there shouldn't be any uh, over budget uh, um, applications or anything like that up to this point. So that's where we're at so far. 
And the heritage, we, they're going to have a little dig around, aren't they? Yeah, we've got a heritage report. Um, there is a condition on consent that there's monitoring. Um, we've also had three, we confirmed that they're happy with the proposal. Um, two of them want to be there during the uh, ground preparation. So that will happen. I and thought all the underground was surge was in place. It is, but you've got to scrape away the, the earth to get the foundation and all the, all the concrete. So there's, there's a soil disturbance. As soon as you get into soil disturbance, um, the heritage is on the way. It's not good down there. It's not good down there. That sounds I think those bodies are a bit less than that. We've had some of them in the garden, Yeah. And the Tikara Bay. Uh, yes, Caro, it's still ticking along. Yes, so we've had we've had last week we had reasons consent granted after um, following up with Iwi. Uh, two Iwi want to be on site for the excavation work, and um, that's all underway. Well, it's been built off site, so it should be on track. Um, pretty sure. Thank you. Is that just another long drop top to it? Yeah, that's just the long drop one. So we're we'll take, taking the existing. Um, Hand it out and, and then put a new tank and a new unit on top. So you, you, a lot of the excavations have been done. It's also kind of car park area to be disturbed. Um, but yeah, there's no, there's a lot of, there's much less risk from the archaeological point of view with the car. And just the last one, how a new escape bowl that's yes, so we've got the design or the concept design um, that the board had a look at and sort of endorsed. Um, we've just Finish the uh, tender tender for that. So we're going to do a closed tender for two companies. It'll probably be the premium skate parts that just finished on the tar. They've got a, a, a site out in Auckland that are um, in the middle of at the moment, so they're interested in tendering for that. And uh, also a company, Acid Skates, that's just done in Melville and Hamilton are also interested. Um, the budget's not huge, so what we've got is the priority is for re, uh, refurbishment yeah. of the existing, and then whatever's left over, um, that's the good thing about the tender. They'll come back and say, look, we can do this yeah. and this, and then we'll, we'll assess that and um, go with choose the one that we think's most um, appropriate and best. So the refurbishing is a grind? Yeah, grind, and then it'll be fill in as well. So, okay. it's, and, you know, there's a bit of grinding and fill in because there's big gaps in some of the, some of the um, Thank concrete. Thank you. Moving along. Now we're down to uh, trees maintenance written. Oh, tick and tick and tick and Oh, hit the tick. Drinking water. How's that? We drink so this year. The um, project's going very well. Yep. Um, we had a bit of dirt move around on some of the sites during that heavy weather over Queen's birthday. <clears throat> a lot of rain, so it's a bit of a tidy up on a couple of the sites. But overall, not too bad. Um, and yeah, Tyra is going well. It's, it's basically done. Is that commissioned? Um, not commissioned yet, no. no. So um, they're going through the stuff at the moment. They've done some commissioning last week, and they're getting pretty close on that. So, um, so yeah, that one's not too far away. Kawa a little bit later on this calendar year. Uh, should be all done. Pre-Christmas is the plan at this stage. Uh, and they're just starting to um, do some site prep work up in Coromandel, so we're, we're working our way around all the sites. But yeah, overall, it's gone really well. Big job too, is if you have a look up at um, Tyro, up at Hamar mm -hmm. Terrace, it's a big job for a new yeah. treat plant up there, and you know, it's the whole kind of next level for, for the TCDC for this district. So yeah. So one of the issues through the chair for Ken was um, Tyro always had this issue around, had a lot of water in winter and they got colour and it and issues, and some are not much water. So further up, how is the supply of the network? Is that going to be affected by what's going on here? So um, the supply won't be affected, um, but we did a new intake a couple of years ago, that river, um, river bank filtration mm -hmm. uh, project out at Pepe, out at the Tyra intake. And so we've got the old intake, which is further up, and then further downstream, uh, you get a bit more, I guess, a little um, small tributary comes in, so you get a bit more water in the stream. We've got a river bank filtration where it uh, kind of pulls water um, through the side of the of the river, mm -hmm. um, and so we've got reasonable capacity water wise. And what happens? The, the times when Tyra has really struggled is when during the peak period you've got everyone here, and then you get bad weather. You're not last New Year's storms. Yeah. And what would happen is the turbidity would go up, you get a lot of dirt, 
and the old plant couldn't handle um, that higher turbidity, you know, and so then you've got people still carrying around their dishwasher and flushing their toilets. A lot of people here all on holiday, all stuck at home because the weather's bad, um, and we couldn't produce enough water to keep up, and so then our reservoirs would be dropping and dropping, and so it was a constant battle that we were trying to chase and balance it. Whereas now with the new treatment plant, you can't run during the middle of a really bad storm, you've got a lot of grit and a lot of dirt coming down the river, but as soon as that grit settles out, which normally happens quite quickly in a storm, um, then the treatment plant can get going a lot sooner than the old treatment plant would be able to get going because the membrane technology is a lot better. Uh, you can treat dirty water a lot better than we could do with the old technology plant. So, so it will really help us with though, any of those kind of New Year's summer storms because there is the time that we've been caught in the past. What about the resource consent restrictions? Um, so we do have restrictions on the resource consent there, but we went through a big process, um, as you might remember, for that new uh, PIPI intake, the riverbed filtration, river bank filtration, and um, <clears throat> and um, uh, and we've got like consent conditions that we think are workable. So this was a couple of years ago. So what we got was this is the level, and then for um, a certain number of days a year, which I can't recall off the top of my head, if it's 20 days or something, you can go to a much higher level to help us get through the peak. Mm -hmm. So, um, but but obviously you can't have that high level all year round because that's detrimental to the uh, to the stream ecology. And so for a short period, you can. Can pump high at a higher rate when we need that water. So yeah, so overall we, we think we're pretty. Were you close this year? Um, no, I think Tyra was okay this year actually mm -hmm. because we had good weather. You know, we didn't have any of those storms over that over the peak. So that again, that didn't kind of cause us that issue. Um, that you know we can have the plant offer it. You know, a full day previously during a big storm, and then you'd really see your backwards. So so with the membrane plants, there's quite a lot of backwash involved, and quite a big percentage of water is lost. Or are you, um, are you with control yeah, of that? A little bit. It's not too bad though. Um, yeah. So there's a it's quite a complex process around um, around the use of um, backwashing and um, back flushing the membranes, and then using this chemical treatment to strip off anything that's on the membranes. It's quite a Quite a lot more of an involved, involved process. So yeah, they, you know, as far as treatment plants, they cost a lot more to run, um, but it gives you that um, level of surety that you need to make the drinking water standards sustainable. Oh, the water's good you know, coming out. Yeah, exactly. about the waste, whether that's yeah. going to affect supply to town. And um, no, I don't think so. No, I think we'll be okay as far as that. Because during the old, with the old plant, you still have to backwash the filters a lot, and that's the problem you get into during bad weather. If you had a storm that went on for like two or three days. Even if the stability kind of came down, you get the plant going again, but then because it was still dirty, the filters would be clogged, then you go into a backwash, it would take an hour normally on a backwash. And right when you didn't right when you need the water, the plant would need to go into a backwash, and so you can't produce water because it's busy backwashing, using any clean water you've produced to then clean the filters. So you're just constantly in this chasing your tail, going around in circles a little bit during a bad storm, whereas with the membranes, you won't be stuck in a backwash for so long. They won't they won't need to backwash as frequently. So the microns the same coming through at level water. I thought the, the uh, membrane yeah. flames a lot. Membrane's a lot, a lot tighter. Yeah, yeah. So there'd be a lot more sediment to get rid of, wouldn't it? Um, in some ways, yeah, not not really. I'm just, just really, I'm just getting around yeah. the fact of how yeah. much back wash water is going to affect. Yeah, I understand you know, what you're saying. Yeah, no, it, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be as much anyway. It should. It should actually be fine. Yeah. If you're managing the trick part right? well, okay. you should end up in a kind of that situation. I think you're, 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 you know, you're, you're querying on to that. Yeah. Okay. You're going to get the heavy rain first, don't you? Well, no, yeah, just just because they're very fine yeah. filtration, yeah. they'll yeah. pick up everything. So um, mm -hmm. the other ones used to be a lot less um, uh, micro, so more stuff would get through and just get them. Yeah, dirt, dirt, dirt wise, you're probably dirt wise, you're probably catching the same kind of dirt, but the thing is that the membranes can catch any little bacteria, all those kind of things, you know, microscopic, you know, um, things. Whereas the other technology relies on like the chemical coagulation and flocculation to kind of like track all that stuff mm. and then kind of bundle it up to bigger bigger little groups of greeblies that then would get trapped by the sand mm. dunes, whereas you don't need drinking any water. Mm. Mm. Stop drinking water. Is there any further discussion on the work program? If not, somebody moves and check it. The work program? Yeah, on a favour? No. Yes. Thank you. 3.1. Yeah, sorry. Um, it's dreaming away here a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm happy to talk to someone. So Donna Holland's obviously um, not here. She's tied up in other work uh, in Thames, but it's a pretty straightforward report here. I'm um, happy to kind of 
I'm doing my best to answer any queries. Oh, it looks like the call's got something. Oh, and I was just going to say, John Muston is also online. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, this was it. This, this oh, came. There is. <laughs> oh. Is there a lie or something? Um. It's the top of your head. <laughs> Mm. Uh, this came from the annual plan of operations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was considered, and it was, um, re um, yeah, I guess, directed from council that it come out to each community board, and it's an opportunity to support community groups um, through your discretionary budget or not. Uh, totally, you know, community board um, decision. Um, so the same report is going to. Obviously, with the community groups, the, the five community boards for consideration, um, and yeah, it is a discretion. John, I don't know whether you want to add anything to that. I'm sorry, I didn't realise we were going to be there. No, that's fine, Stephen. You summarised it up, and the report's pretty self-explanatory. Relief. Yeah, I think it's uh, through the chair. It's um, it's an offer. I don't know how it's going to work for the community boards, whether we're just going to wait for these applications or just going to go straight out and pay it, because I think some of them in some areas won't, won't need it, and others may, so I don't know how we're going to deal with this. Is there any sort of approach? To uh, this, the suggestion around process is that um, you either resolve to, to grant it or not. I mean, it, the, the reality there is trying to be somewhat pragmatic that it's, you know, $100 or $350, you almost don't want to put the burden to them to, to apply and then staff are going to have to process an application and consider it. So it was it was really just a blanket. Blanket. The suggestion was do it. A blanket. Do, 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 do or don't. Um, and, and not perhaps try and uh, work out what group would um, desperately need it or, or not desperately need it. Uh, just, yeah, um, so you could, yeah, do, do or don't. Um, it, on the basis that it was... Um, on each one, a relatively small amount. I appreciate that when you add eleven together, it, it, you know it, it does um, it does add up. You're asking the discretionary fund to fund this. That's the recommendation. Yeah. That three hundred and fifty dollars is their annual rent, isn't it? That's correct. Yeah. And a hundred dollars is that at their total annual rent too? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. They don't pay yeah. services pay less than uh, yes. up to. No, um, a discretionary budget is how much is it? Is it enough to cover all the five boards? 20 grand. 20 20 grand. grand. There's enough in the discretionary budget next year to cover that? There's enough uh, definitely for this board. The report, yep, you've got $20,000. Okay. Um, but of course, it's, you know, um, you can only spend it once. Yeah. Mm, generally. Nothing for Hikawai? Uh, well, we'll be in there. Who owns the Hikawai Hall? I don't know. We own the Hikawai Hall. Yeah. yeah. Which covers it. Okay. Thank Through you, you so. Mr. Chairman, that the Hikawai Hall is owned by Council. Okay. Thank you, John. Yeah. So should they be included? Just, should they be included? No. no, they have a service level of rental council. Pay a rent or something like that. Is that Tyrell or the use? No, Tyrell don't have a service level of rental Yeah, what do you think? Well, oh, I think it's a good idea. Great idea. Mm -hmm. I, I think it can help the community groups. Um, because I think, you know, all the charities are pulling back and the community groups, um, some of them will find it a little bit tight and so it's a little bit of fact. We'll find also through the chair that these applications may come through and a grant application, so it's another way of sorting it out. Yep. So, if there's someone like to say move, I'd like to move. I'll move that. Oh, second. Yep. Second. In favour? Aye. Aye. No. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Ross. Thank you. Thanks, John. Yeah. Cheers. We're going to public excluded, so it's public excluded. This is a public excluded item. Please vacate this warm area. <laughs> <laughs>
Carl, it's come up with him. I could do well with somebody's visa. Is it odd that the member's reports on oh, probably sorry. five minutes? Mm -hmm. okay, well, yeah. Sorry, do you want to do the member's reports first? Sorry, why am I back? Hold it. <laughs> we're going to do our memory report first. I've just been Have advised that you can reseat. Oh. <laughs> 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 I had it round the wrong way. Good. So. Thanks so much for covering my butt. Yeah, unusual for this council. <laughs> 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 Who'd like to lead off on members' reports, please? Well, we have got it round the wrong way. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, go Barry, go ahead. Well, <clears throat> when the storms we've been having and the lots and lots of rain coming down, I've been to Island Close uh, on high tide, and there's no flooding whatsoever down there. The road into it on the bit of a cobble stuff, that's a bit wet and stuff for that. That needs to be placed, but that's a private road, as far as I know. But there's no problem, just needs a bit of uh, maintenance on the south end reserve, just to clear that there. No. But, but the outlet, yeah, the on the, the, the streams yeah. out there on the yeah. beach. Yeah. 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 There's nothing in Colin Close that I've ever seen. There's nothing. Again, I have to say that when, when uh, I'm told. Gordon was here. No, I had a word with him before. <laughs> I know. The miserable person. Uh, I had a look at the waterways playgrounds. It's not finished yet. Oh, my God, it's looking really, really good. I've had a look at some of the X, and that Beach Access 9. That's really good. Concerned about the. Um, Royal Billy Point, wharf there, the build up of sand around there. It's, well, it's not to do with the ramp, I don't know. And the nature. But um, <clears throat> what I'd like to suggest that they, could they shift the, the rubbish bins off the beach accesses into the, where the streets come in? I'd like to see where possible, and over time, not over, it won't happen overnight. Where I have two rubbish bins, one for rubbish and one for recycling, rather than people just dumping all the recycling stuff in all the time. And I, I've got a meeting with the Ratepayers Association tomorrow. They put it off from last week, so that would be an interesting thing. But there, and uh, other than that, I don't think there is anything. Uh, the, uh, Really pleased with the same with the playgrounds, what, they, what they're doing at all. And you can see, I noticed you shifted the lights from the waterways out so you could use them down there at any time. No, no, that's yeah. indeed. Mm. And I could do anyone. No, it's not so. That's you. All right. Um, well. Um, I've been having a bit of discussion around the town with the um, some of the guys from the um, men's shed, trying to come up with some idea of where they can go. I thought they would be here to give a presentation. They got, they got an AGM tomorrow night. No, uh, Wednesday, 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 Wednesday night. night. Sorry, I'll see you there. And I've been asked to go. Oh, I think men's shed's probably a great thing for for the retired guys around the town. So it would be nice if we could find somewhere for them to to live. Um, where they're not annoying the, the neighbours and, um, mm. and, and that sort of carry on. Uh, we've also been having quite a discussion about the um, Pano Trail, um, and it's, that's sort of got me flummoxed a bit. I'd like to know, I'd like to probably spend a bit more time on that, try and, I don't know whether it's worth talking to the people that live out there or. Um, I think it'd be a bloody great thing if it could go right around. Yeah, well, it went, it'd be a great thing if it could go right around. And um, I know that I think they're not going to just have trouble with the, the two or three on that on the Pahnu side. They're going to have trouble with quite a few on this side too. 
No, oh, they've always they've already put their hand up. They've yeah, they're going to fight. Tanner, mm. um, I don't know what bloody if they can get along through that dock reserve. That's the cabbage tree. The cabbage tree thing. That's apparently yeah. apparently the biggest cabbage tree reserve in New Zealand. Mm. So you're not going to have much show getting through that. Um, maybe along the very edge. I remember years and years ago we put the lions put a a little park in the middle of there. Um, barbecue tables and things oh, like yeah, that. That's, so that's all overgrown again now. Yeah. Nothing ever up with it. Yeah, it went in, but it just never got used. Oh, that's by the baby. No, the yeah, half, no, no, halfway along. Halfway oh, along the street. Because there is that reserve there, it's ran for development by yeah. the baby. Yeah, halfway along the reserve, the uh, on the left there was yeah. one. Before you got to the one uh, with the was, I'm going back to when I was in the lines in the oh, 80s. Right. So that's a long, long time ago. Still wearing nappies. Yeah. That's why I think it's yeah. But um, yeah, it's it'd be nice to get it um, get it resolved, and and I'm still getting flack about the the skateboard bar. Oh yeah. So that's about the lot. Yeah, I, I do like Jones idea. I've got to say, but I guess we'll talk about that in the workshop tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. All right. And. I've, ta- I've, I've sent it to Nicole. Um, I attended the Tyra Heritage Society meeting um, at the beginning of this month. I think we've got a workshop later on. Mm-hmm. Um, I attended a number of webinars, not as a um, community board person because I was invited to. Um, one was Recreation Aotearoa New Zealand Dash New Zealand Sports New Zealand. And that's why I said before, I think we need to look at the involved in them in the future as well. We've got it in both the open sports plan and the open parks and reserves. It needs a different approach in the future under uh, post-COVID. Working with other groups and there's funding available at that top level and knowing the funding, again, we seem to be the only part of New Zealand that's different. Um, I also was invited to attend the Ministry for the Environment Plastics Recycling because of my work in the past with hazardous substances that also went the same path. And they had three levels. One was the Basel Convention for Plastics that has gone over to Basel, accepted. Um, The Importer-Exporter Registration and manufacturer registration, which affects the recycling companies as well. You can't just import and export. And lastly, the curbside recycling, which we started adopting yesterday is the day that we all had to put out one and two um, thing. And I've, put, I've sent this to Nicole and I've also sent it to Lorna. Um, it's put out by Ministry for the Environment and Wastemans and also the New Zealand Recycle Association and it's a lot more clearer because I've had a number of calls from people asking what's one and two and I can't see one and two on the bottom of the bottle so I think you know it's really good to put it to rest. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's helpful. It's a helpful thing because people you know, not everyone knows the world of plastics and it's helpful to them and that's actually got what is what. Um, I attended a Charities Commission one which made a lot of difference to um, charitable organisations and there's available now a webinar for all people on a one-on-one basis with any organisation in um, dire straits post-COVID. Um, I also did the local government New Zealand MZTA ones that were on offer by our, um, our council and um, Sadalis Vidya and um, also one that was assisting communities in hard times. I think to try and keep my knowledge up too, but also there was some good stuff and I do know that teams received um, one of the... Um, Innovating Streets for People Pilot Fund. Um, <clears throat> advocacy, um, a big thank you for Pukatui residents for, for the trimming down Pukatui Road right up to Broken Hills. They're wrapped about it. 
Um, I think it's another thing that's taken years to actually have done. Um, I notice NZTA and local um, you know, contractors have been trimming all the signed um, posts, except per acre line. Um, <clears throat> and um, congratulations to Tyrua School for their 60 second sell of Tyrua. It was brilliant. They got a highly commended, um, and I thought it was a good, you know, exercise on their part to promote Tyrua. Um, I think we need to do more for the businesses of Tyrua promoting them outside there in the rest of the world of New Zealand rather than just insular in ourselves. So we want people to come and start spending money. Um, Gordon Cost has approached me several times re really, that um, on close flooding and it's long years of requesting. I think I worked out looking at all the past things, something like 15 years. We've got to stop laughing and, and talking and do something. Because that whole that you know the residents there are getting to the court stage. And I don't want to go to court. Um, and also too, there's been a lot of comment over the skateboard park or path, both sides. I thought the another suggestion was coming today, but it didn't. Um, and again, I, my records show that going over all the documents, we, we go back to 1995 to talk about the skateboard park. That's long years of asking. I'm also aware that places, um, you know, from people ringing and talking, that, you know, we've got limited open spaces that where we could, you know, have a, a skate park, but we need to start actioning. Again, not just shelving. I, I think what's going on out there, they're absolutely frustrated with um, the newspaper article that appeared on the um, Mercury Bay and Fauna, and it put us in a very bad state. Um, and that's all I want to say. Thanks, uh, to the Chair. Uh, just really, just a bit of a roundup, uh, a bit of council stuff. But uh, first of all, COVID nineteen. I think the uh, we're in a situation where New Zealand is ahead of the world, um, and the other borders are going to take a while to open, and the economic pain is going to start soon. I think next year will be a tougher year than this year mm -hmm. when those packages start to uh, stop and people look at their lifestyles. So we're in just some really serious times there, and the real pressure comes back to council to do to look local, buy local, and use local contracts. So I hope that the message goes out and we try and reinforce those um, actions. Uh, the annual plan, we've, uh, we had our line-by-line -line review of projects, the OPEX review, and uh, we've, we've got a fairly big debt to handle. And then we've chopped that right back and we hope to have a meeting online tomorrow to sign that eight annual plan off uh, in its reduced form for the year and see how we manage going forward on that. Long-term plans coming up, 21-31, so think about that, guys. It's uh, going to start happening in July, and uh, there's a there's a program that, um, that Stephen will discuss and tell, tell us where we're going, and and, um, and we'll be able to lock into that. And there's some uh, retained jo or projects that will roll over to that as well. Uh, NZTA issues were raised at council, and Tony Fox, who represents council at that, um, that board, has asked us to start to put again a list of things that affect us in terms of NT, NTTA's um, ability to fix, and we're talking you know, roading and bridges and yes. flooding and Pickaway Road and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so get a list prepared for, and we can add that to the list. Um, councillors, community board representation at council and community board is coming up for discussion. The numbers, what, what should you do, what we shouldn't do. So you can have a look at that. And Holland Close, of course, is one of our key ones that we need to address and hopefully we address it today. That's me. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. Yeah, well, the usual, that you've already mentioned, Holland Skate Park. Um, resident Ray Pass, Terry came along to the last Resident Ray Pass meeting, RSC's bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> but it all went very well, didn't it? We had a, a very frank and, and um, yeah, discussion. good discussion. Um, I can say that the uh, the hall, both the hall and the 
visitor centre, and really, you what used to be the information centre. They've had a changing of the guard at the top, um, but uh, you know, as we're just coming out of this COVID thing, there's not a lot happening. That's really, really me. A lot of talk, a lot of people knocking on my door, and that's um, that's life. So there you go. You no know, further comments on the members' reports. Move and second, members' reports, please. Somebody move and second. Yep. Yep. Thank you. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Right. Now we're going to have our public excluded session. Don't and be too and long. It's, and it's not <laughs> raining, so you're okay. <laughs> we just have some no, I know. We've got lunch coming up, so it won't be too long. Have we got somebody to move, move and second that we move into public excluded? Yes, somebody move and second, please, that we move into public excluded. Yeah, yep. move. Yep. Second it, yep. Okay. Stop recording.